What's up everybody? Straw Hats are cool here and before we get into today's video I just want to give a special shout out to some friends of the channel Riley TCG. Um, they were very generous and sent me some items from their store. They sell some products for the One Piece TCG such as playmats, sleeves, deck boxes and they've got some really cool stuff and they were very generous and sent me some of their products so I thought why not show them off on the channel um, just you know a little plug for some friends so um, they have gone ahead and they have sent me a playmat so this thing looks absolutely incredible uh, two of my favorite characters we've got Gear 5 Luffy and my boy Rob Lucci on here. Uh, I I absolutely love this. It's got my favorite colors on it. Purple is my favorite color. And just everything about this looks absolutely incredible. It's also like kind of soft, which is actually really nice. I, I quite like it. I mean, like, look at this thing. This is so vibrant and it just looks really, really cool. Uh, and they also sent me a deck box with the same art on it, which is really cool. Um, this is one of their, I believe it's one of their deluxe decks, deck boxes. So up here on the top and all these parts come off. It's got a little dice tray. And then down below you've got where your deck would go. And it's also got a little tray for your deck as well. So really, really cool stuff. Um, I'm going to be sure to plug all of their their socials uh, in the comments section down below. So I'll plug their, their Twitter, the store, uh, and they also just recently started a YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out as well. Um, check out their Twitter. I do believe they just put some announcements for a Black Friday sale, which they're going to be doing on their store until the 27th of November, if I recall. So I believe it's 40% off their products, which is really insane, honestly. Like this is, these pro these, like the playmat and deck box, the quality on these is really, really nice. I'm very impressed with what they're doing there. So if this looks cool to you, definitely check them out. I know they recently dropped a, like a Zoro and Uta deck box as well. They got all sorts of stuff on there, but um, really glad they picked this one out because this this is absolutely awesome like i said luffy of course protagonist of the series uh well gotta be one of your favorite characters and for me my favorite antagonist is rob lucci so two of them together just absolutely incredible so thank you to riley tcg for sending me these products be sure to check them out yourself if you want to pick up some awesome products like this. Now's the time to do it as they've got that Black Friday sale going on. So be sure to check that out in on their uh, Twitter, which I will link down below. So again, thank you for watching. And with that, we'll be getting into the deck profile. Peace. What's up, everybody? Straw Hats are cool here. And we are back again with another video. Today, I'm going to be going over my deck list that I used to get top 16 at this past weekend's core TCG online treasure cup. So I ended up finishing 7-2 with red purple law. Um, I, I was I got off to a pretty strong start. I believe I was 6-0 going into round seven and then lost my first game in round seven and then ended up losing my last game in round nine. But we'll talk about the matchups more here a little towards the end of the video because I know what you guys are most excited for is of course going to be the deck list. So of course we've got our leader, which is the red purple law. And for those who don't know, he's got the ability that once during your turn, you can activate the ability to return three dawn from your dawn or three of your dawn to the dawn deck in order to return up to one of your opponent's 3,000 power or less characters to the bottom of their deck. And then you also get to play out a four cost or lower character from your hand without paying the cost. So it's a very powerful effect. Uh, it can be a little costly. We are returning a lot of dawn to the dawn deck. You will 
almost never be like I, I think the most dawn I ever had was eight the whole day playing it's it's very hard to get to uh, get to ten dawn with this deck because you are using the leader effect just about every single turn uh, so let's get into the rest of the cards so wouldn't be a red tech if we didn't of course include our four copies of Otama Otama just a good 2k counter with the on play effect that lets us give minus 2000 to one of our opponent's characters which synergizes very well with what our leader is trying to do can bring a 5000 power character within range of our leader effects we can bottom deck that and then as well play something out with the effect alongside Otama we've got four copies of the film promo pack Gordon this is the one cost 2000 power character that's got the effect that we can bottom deck him to give minus 3000 power to one of our opponent's characters so very similar to Otama in that um, we're, give, we're reducing the power of our opponent's characters so that we can utilize our leader effect more effectively and destroy our opponent's board with like just bottom deck just about everything they play every single turn Gordon alone allows Law to bottom deck a 6,000 6, power or lower character. So very strong effect for Gordon. He synergizes very well with what we're trying to do. Then we've also got four copies of the Rush Zoro from set one. Character that I'm sure most of us are familiar with. He's just a vanilla stat character with Rush. No counter, of course, but... Just having a rusher that is also just a natural attacker is very, very good. Yes, there are turns where you can bottom deck something and even just play out this. It's not a four cost. We're not getting like max value out of that. But it is just a rusher so we can attack with it the turn that it's played. Um, it is also the only three cost character in our deck. So it's really the only good play we have uh, turn two going first. Uh, and there were a lot of times where I even just played it out on turn two going first and didn't even attack with it. I just left it active because one of the deck's weaknesses, in my opinion, is that if your opponent just chooses to clear your board before attacking your life, um, it can be like you'll run out of resources and then it's very difficult for you to close out the game. So by not attacking with it that first turn, it does force our opponent to attack our leader on their first attack. Not Just don't want to give them the option to attack anything other than our leader on their first attack. So that, that way we can get another card, um, which is very important as we do use a lot of resources very quickly. You, you will not have a very large hand size or a lot of dawn when playing this deck. Next up, we've got four copies of the Film Pack Law. This is a character that I was a pretty big fan of in set one, as I was a pretty hardcore Luffy main in set one, just a mono red Luffy. And I like this deck quite a lot, uh, or this character quite a lot in that deck. Um, it's just, it's a 4,000, or a four cost 5,000 power character with counter. And then it's got the same ability of Otama that on play we can give minus 2,000 power to one of our opponent's characters. This card was absolutely insane for me and really was one of the MB MVPs the whole day that I was playing the deck. Especially against decks like Katakuri. If you go second, you know, the best thing they can do uh, going first would be on their uh, second turn to play out a Paro Sparrow. And if they do that, you can just play this down, use your leader effect, play something else, and bottom deck the Paro Sparrow. And by bottom decking the Paro Sparrow, you're also denying them uh, the search off the KO effect. Since it's not being KO'd, it is just being sent to the bottom of the deck. So this card was insane. If you go second and play it on curve, you can remove anything that your opponent played, which is very, very powerful. So big fan of the film pack law is very very strong and definitely one of the best cards throughout the day next up we've got 
four copies of the new Beppo that was also um, included in the starter deck 10 alongside the leaders with, of course, Law. Beppo is a four cost, 5,000 power character. He's got 1k counter and he's got the effect on play and when attacking. If your opponent has more Dawn on their Dawn field than you, you may add up to one Dawn from your Dawn deck onto your Dawn field at rest. So he ramps the rest of Dawn if you have less Dawn than your opponent, essentially. And in this deck, you almost always will. So this, again, was it's kind of one of the MVPs of the deck because with uh, this card alone, if it's able to stick on the field, it essentially lets you be able to comfortably use your leader effect every single turn. So very good card there. Just, you know, it's a four cost. We cheated out a lot of times when you use the leader effect. This is one of your cards that you're going to be wanting to play off the effect for free as it ramps you back up and you're putting yourself behind on Dawn. And then playing this out just kind of puts you back a little bit so you're not going as far behind in Dawn. Next up, we've got four copies of Sachi and Penguin, and I'm going to be honest, these straight up might be the best cards in the deck. It's a 2k counter, but honestly, you will play this card more than you'll use it as a 2k counter. Like, you, I almost feel like I should have put more 2ks in the deck if I even wanted them, because you're not using this as a 2k counter. This is like the card you want to play off of your leader effect. So 2k counter, 4 cost, 5,000 power, and the on play, if you have 3 or less Dawn on your field, then you can add 2 Dawn cards from your Dawn deck rested. Now on paper it doesn't sound great because it's a 4 cost, and so when you play it it's like how are you going to have less than 3 Dawn? But with the leader effect, as long as you don't have more than 6 Dawn when you use the leader effect, You'll go down to three, you play these guys off the leader effect, and then you get two Dawn ramped back up, which is just absolutely incredible because it you're still going up one Dawn because essentially, so you get two Dawn per turn, and if you minus three, you're going negative one that next turn, unless you ramp, in which case you're neutral. But with these guys, you're still going up one. So if you're on six and you use this you'll go to five so next turn you'll be on seven which is one more dawn than you started this turn with so just very good card lets you it progresses your dawn and still lets you use your leader effect which is that exactly what this deck needs especially in conjunction if you've got like a beppo on the field this is a very this is just an absolutely insane card next we've got Four copies of the Blocker Law from Starter Deck 10. It's a four cost, 5,000 power character with counter. It's a blocker and on play, you may Dawn minus one. And then if your opponent has seven or more cards in their hand, you get to do what Isho does and you get to choose two and they discard them. You don't get to look at the cards before. You just kind of get to pick two at random and then your opponent has to discard them. Honestly, this card was a little underwhelming. I didn't play it very often, and the couple times I did, it was even fewer that I actually used the Dawn Minus effect. It's pretty easy to play around, but it does, you know, have to keep your opponent thinking that you have it. My issue that I found with this card, though, at least with the way the deck is now, I think it gets a little better in set 5 when you've got cards like the um, 5 cost blocker kid. Uh, really helps this deck out a lot and um, so anyways but my problem with this card is that when you're using your leader effect every turn using another Dawn minus effect it just I feel like it puts you back too far most of the time which makes playing it and using the effect feel bad even when it would be good so you really have to kind of think turns in advance whether or not this is going to be in something you consider using. Because if you use this and your leader effect, that's Dawn minus four. So you're definitely be going to be going down quite a bit in Dawn going into your next turn, which 
can be a little troublesome. So still a good card, but definitely was a little underwhelming in my opinion, at least in the games that I played this weekend. Still a good card, definitely would not cut it from the list right now. Just having access to a blocker is good on its own. Next up we've got four copies of Brook. This is the set one Brook that is a four cost 5000 power character with counter. Uh, you're noticing a trend here, most of the deck is four cost 5000 power characters. Um, so Brook, he's got the effect Dawn 1 when attacking. Give up to two of your opponent's characters, minus 2,000 power during this turn. So, again, plays into what we're trying to do, brings our opponent's cards within range of our leader effect. So, keeps our opponent's boards clear, um, helps us clear our opponent's boards, I should say. Um, as well as, it's when it's, it's a win attacking effect, so you're still putting pressure on them. Something cool about Brook is that you can also attack the thing you're giving Dawn minus two and then minus something else. So he kind of can help you clear two bodies at once, which is very powerful. So again, yeah, not a lot else to say with Brook, just more Dawn minus effects for the deck, which is always good. Next up, we've got two copies of Jan Bart. Only playing two, this is another card from starter deck 10. My issue with the card is that paying one to get one a lot of the times is just a little hard to do because with how we're using our Dawn you often don't have the one up to use so it's better to have something like Beppo or the Sachi Penguin that does the same thing essentially without the cost so that's why I cut down the Jean Bart it's still a good card but in this deck in particular I felt like it wasn't as impactful especially when compared to Beppo and Sachi Penguin. So I ended up cutting two copies just because I felt like it wasn't doing a lot outside of being a body I could play off my leader effect. So next up we've got kind of my fun pick for the deck which was two copies of the OP04 Usopp. This is a four cost 5000 power character with counter and the on KO effect that we can KO up to one of our opponent's characters with 5,000 base power or less. So what's cool about the Usopp is that the wording says base power, so that means even if our opponent buffs up like a 5,000 power character to a 7 with Dawn, and this gets KO'd, we can still KO it because its original power, base power, is 5,000. So we can kind of get around the, the Dawn manipulation there which is pretty cool um, and honestly the card wasn't too bad I, I was kind of just playing it for fun and thought that maybe my mindset was that in matchups like green purple doe flamingo I know they're playing a very high count of 5,000 power characters uh, so by playing this it, it like our opponent doesn't want to KO it because they've got so many 5,000 power characters of their own so it's just kind of another body that we should be able to attack with every turn. Uh, it was also very good in one of the law games that I played. Um, I remember I had two rested characters. I think one was a Beppo. They KO'd the Beppo and then ended up just leaving the Usopp. Because if they KO'd the Usopp, I was going to be able to KO their blocker, which they didn't want because they were already down to one life. And I think they only had a couple cards in hand, so they were kind of relying on that blocker. But it still felt bad because either I get another attacker or um, their blocker, like they keep their blocker or I've got the another attacker. I think it might have been better there though for them to try and clear the Usopp because there are still like I can still just use my leader effect to bottom deck the blocker. But it makes your opponents think and they're it just especially with law when you need to have your five characters to use your leader effect can be kind of annoying to have to deal with so um i don't think you have to play this card at all but it was fun and i liked having it in the deck so next cards i'm going to do these ones together um so we've got four copies of ulti and then the four copies of page one so i'm sure most of you are aware these cards kind of combo together ulti is a 2k counter 
but also has the on play effect to Don minus one. We can play a page one from our hand for free. So again, like a kind of same deal with the law with ulti, using multiple Don minus effects in a turn is pretty rough. But with this one, I actually came up more than the law and it's kind of crazy because there are turns where you can just like play a thing and then cheat a thing and then if it's the ulti you can cheat out of page one so you can like kind of in a way play three characters for four dawn almost which is a little stupid um i again i don't like there are probably th better things you could play in the deck but i was trying to build it super aggressively and it worked out um being very aggressive because with the thing with this deck is you can be super aggressive and your opponent just also never has a board so the only thing they really have to attack with each turn assuming you're able to clear things every turn is going to be their leader so you've got like just constantly a board of like three four five characters and you just swing 5k with them every turn just because it's like either your opponent's giving you a card or they're taking a hit and they're not going to be able to stop all of them so that's what's cool about the deck. The deck is really fun to play. Um, it's very obnoxious to play against, I won't lie. I hate playing against this deck. Alright, next up we've got two copies of Miss All Sunday. This is a 5 cost, 5,000 power character, and it's got the on play, uh, add up to one dawn from your dawn deck and rest it. Then if you have six or more dawn cards on your field, you draw one. Also got the trigger, dawn minus two, you can play it for free. The trigger never came up, but I never had it in my life. But what I like about this card is that if you go first, you can play this on your your th turn three, so your five on turn. You'll go up to six and it replaces itself. And like I was saying, one of the weaknesses of this deck in my opinion is that you run out of resources very quickly. So having a card that can replace itself was very powerful. And the games where I saw this and was able to play it, it was really powerful. So I definitely liked having the Missile Sunday, but I probably would not play it at more than two copies. All right, down to the last four cards, we've got two copies of Ace. And I still have very mixed feelings about this card. Um, seven cost, 7,000 power, no counter, on play, Two of your opponent's characters get minus 3,000 power. Uh, and we don't get the rush because we're not Whitebeard Pirates type leader. So we're just playing this for the minus 3,000 to two characters. Which is very good, but it's hard to get to 7 Dawn is the problem. So I think I only played this like one game. And the one game that I played it... I, I think I shouldn't have even played it. I think I should have gone for game that turn. I still ended up winning that game, but I think all, I, what I should have done since I think I had eight Dawn that turn was it was against Law, and I could have just bottom decked their only blocker and played out. Well, I could have, so what I should have started by doing was playing a Zoro, using the three Dawn I used to play the Zoro to bottom deck the blocker and play another Zoro. Um... And then I would have had, like, if I sequenced things right, I would have had, like, seven attacks, and some of those could have been seven Ks. And the Law, I think, had, like, three cards in hand and one or two life. So there was no way they were living if I did that. But I ended up playing this to clear their Rush Luffy and their Restand Law, which still, like, my opponent wasn't able to get the game after that. But I definitely think they could have if they had Machinos was the issue, so I should have just gone for game that turn. So... What I'm trying to say is, the ace didn't win me any games, and I'm not a big fan of this card. I'd, I'd probably cut it and try to play something else. There were too many times it just felt dead in my hand. But we were playing two copies, so there they are. There's two copies of ace. And last two cards of the deck, we've got two copies of round table. Just gives one character minus uh, 10,000 power, which... Basically says, you play this, your leader effect can bottom deck any card in the game, which is kind of cool. So, that's the list. It's super fun to play. 
I'll quickly talk about my matchup since this is already like 22 minutes. So round one, I played against Law, and it was against a newer, newer player. She was a very sweet player, and we we had a very nice conversation. But uh, unfortunately, she had been playing a lot with Law, bef like she'd been practicing with Law before the banned and restricted announcement. So uh, she stuck with Law um, going into the event, but she wasn't very comfortable with the new variant, which was a little unfortunate. But super fun opponent, very nice. Uh, we had a nice little conversation during our game, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, then game two, I played against Mono Blue Crocodile. Very good player, but this deck just kind of runs over Crocodile. Um, they did end up finishing 8-1, so they did better than I did in the end. Um, so I think they got like fourth place, which is awesome. So congrats to them on getting fourth place. Um, that's very cool. So they get the Serial Shanks and the Zoro, which is awesome. Uh, so very good player there, but this deck does very well into Croc. You just kind of out-aggress them, and there's not a lot they can do about it. Um, then game three, I played against Akata Curry, and that matchup is almost free for this deck. Because again, your opponent's basically doing nothing until their turn on turn, because they, they play something... And you play something, reduce its power, bottom deck it, play it, something else. And so by the time they get to their Tendon turn, usually you've got like four or five bodies on the field. And they can't even afford to play the 10 cost anymore because you've gotten all their cards out of their hand. And if they play it, you're still going to have a whole bunch of attackers going into the next turn. So this deck does very well in the Katakuri. Game four, I believe I played against green, purple, Doflamingo. And again, with that deck, it feels almost free. Because like if you see this card, you bottom deck all their five costs. They're playing a lot of or a lot of five Ks right now. Um, there's nothing they could do about it. So again, you're just like you build a board while clearing their board, so there's not a lot they can do. In order to stop you there um, so that was that uh, trying to think what I played against game five round nine was kid which is my worst matchup got kind of slaughtered they had two X Drakes on curve and X Drake basically kills everything in my deck so that sucked um, real unfortunate losing that one too because it does mean I missed out on like the Serial Shanks and the Zoro, but it is what it is. Uh, round eight, I played against another Law. That's the one where the Usopp came up. It's a very close game. Um, game before that, I played against a Rebecca, which I lost to. Um, that matchup seems kind of rough, um, but I'd have to play against it more to be sure about that. Uh, prior to that, I played another Kata Curry, which again was pretty free. And I still can't remember what I played on round five. But I won that game. I can't remember what I played though. But anyways, that's the deck. Those were some of my matchups. Can't remember what I played round five. I'll remember later. I'll probably put it in the comments down below. But this is the deck list. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you got any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments below as well. Like I said, this deck is super fun to play, and it's super obnoxious to play against. So I'm sorry to my opponents. I'm sure it was a miserable experience. But if you're the pilot, the deck's a lot of fun. So as always, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, please do consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I know I've been a little bit lacking in terms of like deck profiles and gameplay recently, but I'm hoping over Thanksgiving break that I will kind of get things figured out. I've kind of been working on a little project and hoping that I can get that done. And then after that, uh, going into set five, I'm hoping to get more gameplay and whatnot. So I hope you stay tuned for that, but hope you're also enjoying the market watches. So, and as always, 
Thank you again for watching. With that, I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.